and one. Hello and welcome to episode one of The Sundering. And today I have playing with me, Josh. I'm Josh, I will be playing Glax. I have Moon. I will be playing Shira Everbetal. I have Jamel. Hey guys, Jamel here and I'll be playing Fainus. Unless your name's Ben, in which case you'll call him Chicken. Mike. <laughs> yes, I'm Mike and I'm playing Lycus Lysagoras. I'm glad you have to say it, not me. I have Oscar. <laughs> Hey, I'm Oscar or Salty. I will be playing Kira Mothlight. And I have Darth. Hi, I'm Darth. I'll be playing Verdant Winterbrook. And so, uh, we begin with Fainus. We begin a little higher up than you know, what I might expect. Uh, is your Fainus gliding upon the air currents uh, a little way down from the side of a mountain? Uh, just sort of surveying the land and looking for a place that might be a little more natural, a little more like shelter. It's been seven days since the Sundering. What is the Sundering, some of you are asking. Seven days ago, when Tyr smited the world, and as Lathander put his shield up, he deflected half of that damage upwards into the plains, breaking the boundaries between the planes of existence. Now you walk in a broken world, where you encounter various different areas and planes of existence that otherwise were not in exist uh, were not present in the past the material plane. And so uh, as we follow Phanus, uh, Phanus, you see the clouds begin to swirl around you. Um, you know that the onset of a storm in this new world that you've found yourself in is sudden and is dangerous. You're going to have to find a place to land, and you're going to have to place, find a place to land fast. As you come down through... along the um, mountainside, yeah? Yeah, you, well, you'd sort of come off the mountain, you're just gliding along the air currents, and now, here come... Uh, the clouds are moving around you, and you're going to have to find indoor shelter. Um, as you dip beneath the clouds, you see that what's brewing is one of these electrical storms, where it rains acid, lightning... Um, is thick from the clouds and uh, dark miasma swells around as the ash falls begin to cloud your vision. Uh, you do spot out to the far right um, what looks like the ruins of a city. Um, through the center of this city you see one huge rift down the middle of it and even from this height you can with your sort of eyes um, you can just perceive a little bit of lava um, at the very bottom of this rift, you know that that rift goes deep, deeper than you would have thought. But you're going to have to land there as you haven't got much choice. And as you get closer to the city, you begin to see forms moving around. Some humanoid, some definitely not. But right now, you don't have much choice. If you don't land within the next minute or two, it's going to be incredibly dangerous for you. So at this moment, I'd like you to tell me, in his moment of flying stress, what does Fainus look like? So, Fainus is sort of not it's not exactly an eagle, but not exactly a hawk either. Something kind of, in terms of stature, build, and look, somewhere between the two. And a humanoid, right? And humanoid. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> humanoid that is, uh, that is relevant for this campaign. Is a given. Okay. Yeah. Um, and as you uh, come down now to sort of. Only uh, 50 or 60 feet um, above uh, the ground, uh, you begin to cruise over the top of the city. Um, you see that most of these buildings are still somewhat intact. Um, this was a stone city. Um, you know, the, there's a wall crumbled here. There's a uh, no, there's no sign of any doors or windows. Um, and various parts of the ground are cracked and broken, but... The buildings themselves are intact, and you see that coming out of the rift at the centre of the city, um, you notice a few red-skinned beasts. Um, they walk on four legs um, and have a tail and a rather predominant head. Um, you haven't seen these creatures before, uh, but they resemble uh, some sort of lizard that is stood upright. Um, you'd know that they're probably not worth getting too close to. Um, so as you swing back the other way, you do see that there is a solitary figure walking rather stoically uh, through the city, looking for a place of shelter. 
Um, and I would like to, at this point, ask Darth to tell you what Verdant looks like as you watch him. Uh, Verdant is, he has two, uh, wings, white ethereal wings on his back, uh, but it doesn't look like he's very accustomed to them. Uh, they seem, it, it seems like he's constantly having to, like, finick with, like, uh, what little armor and clothes he has on, uh, just to make sure that everything is like straightened out and he doesn't feel too uncomfortable uh he hit all armor and clothes that he's wearing is torn up or heavily damaged and chipped away uh seeming as low though he just came from some sort of battle uh and then he just has his hair up in that uh very like samurai-ish type of hairdo Okay, and Verdon, as you're walking, you're realizing, you know, you also need to take shelter from the storm. And there's a, a bit of a larger building in front of you. Um, you see two pillars either side of the door. The door is caved inwards, but inside you see the building has quite a vaulted ceiling. It was built as a sort of pyramidical building, um, so with a triangular roof, um, meaning that its structure is held a little better through the sundering. Um, and although the ground appears to be cracked, you do see that, um, inside it's relatively intact. Um, and not only that, but you recognize this is from the past. This is a temple of Tyr. It's also a good place to take some shelter. Indeed. Uh, I would just go in very... I would go in very, uh... I'd go in very quickly. Mm hmm And, uh, yeah, as you move in, um, you do see that bits of light are shining through shafts from the edges of this building. Um, you found yourself some good shelter, but this shelter is likely to be the good candidate for others as well. Speaking of which, you notice somebody who's... At first, they appear quite small, curled up in the corner of the building, but after a moment, you realize that, in fact, they're, they are quite large. Um, somebody's already taken shelter here. Um, Oscar, please describe how Kieran Mustlight looks. Um, uh, upon entering into the shelter, you'll see a man of about six foot five-ish in, in height. Um, he is covered in leather um, carrying with him a club he uh, from the looks of him you can see just by looking that it seems he very feels very uncomfortable with the body that he is in what like seeing as though that it constantly might be changing as you see his form slowly adapting and changing around him uh, he from the looks of him he seems pretty much like somebody that's very well built, based off the fact that he might have been working for the last couple of years. Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. Verdon, as you look into the corner, you see this large furbolg. Uh, you could have seen furbolgs prior to the Sundering. Um. You'd know that they're often guardians of nature. Um. They're often quite gentle and safe uh, beings uh, to be around. Um, and at the moment, he seems to be alone. At, as you move into the building, you hear a slight screech from behind you, and the sound of nails on a blackboard as the claws of Fennis clatter with the ground. Um, his wings wrap in, and uh, Fennis, you walk in behind Verdon, and you also see the Sverbolk. I leave. I hand over to you three. You there? Are you okay? I'm just finding. I'm just finding. Uh, ooh, sorry, I apologize. <clears throat> I'm just finding shelter for the night here. Uh, uh, you guys also here for the same? Uh, yes, I'm Hi. trying to Hi. get back to my home. Well, my home was destroyed. I'm just back. trying to figure out the end of the day what it was that destroyed everything I've spent my livelihood on 
back to your home, you say. Uh, uh, yes. The world's gone to hell. Are you sure that's even possible? Yeah, is your home even there? I... I think it might be. I'm not sure. I... I remember fighting, and then... Next thing I knew, I was... I was very far away. My home. Not sure what exactly happened. But... Uh, this sundering you speak of, uh... If it has truly destroyed the world, then uh, my my home may be a, a safe place for us to go. I understand that. I, I tried to run as much as I could. Nothing would help. Everything's gone. Everything I ever cared about. Do you, do you know what happened? I'm not quite aware. I'm not quite sure myself. Uh, last... Last I saw was a flash of light, and then everything around me was gone. I don't know what the hell's <laughs> happened either. I was in the mountains. I just want to get to the bottom of mission. It. And then I just came down from the mountains, and everything, everything's gone crazy. Yeah. I just want to get to the bottom of it. I want to see what the problem was. What exactly uh, destroyed everything for us. Indeed, I'm also very concerned. Well, if you guys would like to take shelter here for the night, I'm sure we have space. If you guys want to gather around, see what we can do. Uh, this, this is open area. I, saw. Indeed, I think that's for best. I don't know if you guys saw any of this. On my way in, I saw a bunch more creatures out there. I don't know what they were. They they didn't look natural. From what I've seen, the majority of creatures that I've seen in this area, they don't uh, they don't exactly match that which I have spent my my time researching and that that I've managed to hunt here. that which I've been able to see in my life it seems like something's changed indeed and uh, just as you're saying this um, you hear a sort of scraping and a really high pitched chatter going on in the side of the room um, and suddenly there's a sort of um, a bustle as rubble begins to move and you see two creatures uh, exactly like this um They've got three clawed feet. They're each holding a sort of couple of sharp daggers um, that may or may not be made of their own bones. Um, and you see that there is a third creature with them who appears a little larger, a little stouter, uh, but with the same sort of imagery and facial features. Um, what the hell is that? At this point, I will ask you to roll initiative. Do we have to? Oh. Mm -hmm. And we shall <laughs> also leave... Um... Well, no, we won't leave you there quite yet. Yeah, we'll 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 begin the fight. Is everyone rolling initiative? Uh, nope. I'm just waiting for. I've only got five people. Right. In a... Shit. Hold on. Sorry. Just Darth Darth Jamal back, right? Uh, hold on a second, please. Sorry. Um, yeah, no worries. For some reason, it's loaded with old characters instead of new characters. Do you need us to reroll? Um, no, I just need you to tell me what your initiatives were. Alright, let me roll my... Uh... Um, so, Verdon, you had a 15 plus. That's it. You don't roll at advantage with Boots of the Vigilant. You added the 8, no? No, I, it's a 1 on top of that, so that'll be a... Oh, you've got the Boots of Initiative. Uh, you've got the... Yeah, yeah I have uh, a no shield. Um, he has advantage. Okay. Yeah, it's just three for me. That was a terrible rules. Yeah, you're still not in my oh, fucking no. initiative. I don't understand why I can't get you into the party. I'm not quite sure, but I, I do have a three if that's what you need. Like, it says here, this is the group. 
Okay, I've got Lycus, I've got Kiaran. Okay, great. Save. Run. Kiaran, there we go. I've now actually got you in my initiative roller. Um, hey. Sorry, the one I'm missing is Fennis. Eight. I'm an eight. Okay, cool. How atrocious my characters are having eight. Nah, uh, dude, I literally have a plus zero, but I do have a D8 on top and I rolled a three, so I don't know. I have what to advantage, tell you. but I also have a plus zero. I okay, well, what matters um, is that uh, these creatures do not question anything. Um, as soon as they look over to you, and more importantly, over to your packs, um, they can smell the food on you. Um, and frankly, you've got meat on you, too. Um, so the first creature will move up. Um, oh, we're missing an E3. Um, and just to make sure you guys are aware, these creatures are tiny in size. Um, why is it moving them both? That's not very helpful. Uh, okay. Um, so they are sort of that size. And in terms of our fight, uh, we have no Lycus, no Glax, and no Shira. Cool. Um, so the first creature will immediately move up to, um, who's that on the left? Uh, Kiaran? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm rolling to everyone. Let's change that. Oh, well, I rolled a nat 20. Um, so let's roll that again so that I'm rolling to everyone. Um, that's a 17 to hit you. I'll hit. And a 12 to hit you. 12 will not hit. Okay. Um, so that's 8 damage, uh, to Kiaran. Um, E2 will swiftly move in, up and close up in on Verdun. Um... Uh, that's a 19 to hit you, and a 20 to hit you. Who? Me? Yeah, you. Yes, both of those hit. Cool. You take two instances of nine piercing damage. Uh, I'm gonna use one of- or I'm gonna use my reaction to rebuke the violence. Oh, okay. Uh, is that Hellish Rebuke? Uh, no, it is, uh, I need a wisdom saving throw. If they pass, they take half the damage that I just took on, uh, if they fail, then they take the same damage I just took. Okay, and they got three in their wisdom save, so he will die to his own wound, to his own slashes. Um, Verdon, you're up. Oh, that is a uh, cool ability. Well, it's gone now. <laughs> That's my, uh, channel divinity. Yeah. Uh, but, oh. Uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, miles away and it shouldn't be. It isn't exactly what I wanted or had in mind. Uh, we don't have to fight. Uh, there's plenty of space here for all of us. It lets out the most animalistic hiss you have ever seen. You can assume it doesn't understand a fucking word you're saying. Well, I hate to do this, but I'll do what I must. Uh, I'll go up to the one that is next to, uh, what's his name? Kiaran. Uh, yeah, Kiaran, and uh, I'll attack. Okay. Um, and so you do. Um, 5, 10, 15. 15 for the movement speed? Yeah, you can manage that easily. Cool. Hey, what's it? Uh, that's a 19 to hit. Ah, uh, that'll hit? They're probably dead. Probably. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, you, you've just chopped his head off. That's not very nice. Um, he needed that. <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay. Probably. Um, uh, does I that tried to be reasonable. Does that conclude your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay, um, E3 will move up to, um, Fennis. You notice that E3 is a little stumpier, um, and looks a bit more magical in nature. Um... And that is a... a 7 and an 8 to hit you. Um, I didn't think so. And you need to make a wisdom save. That's 4. Okay, uh, you fall prone and erupt into fits of hideous laughter. Which must be quite disturbing on a bird. 
Um, as you're just squawking like a madman. Um, you may make the wisdom save again at the end of your turn, which is next. Right. Yeah, that's only a seven on the side. Okay. Um, so, uh, we're going to leave the combat there for a moment. Um, and we are going to move over to our other friends. So, um, we'll start with Glax. Um, Glax, uh, when the Sundering hit, you were... Um, oh, we don't need that dude in our, pitch, in our image, do we? Um, when the Sundering hit, you were wandering the um, remnants of your grove, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and then as you moved along the path, uh, two creatures sort of popped into existence as the forest around you became suddenly a lot more magical. Mushrooms sprouted out the ground. Um, build me a second. Uh, mushrooms sprouted out the ground. Unusual lights came over the forest. Um, and beasts took on an entirely different uh, visage. Um, and two of the creatures that popped out of this forest in two very different places um, were Lycus Lysagoras and uh, Shira Everpetal. Um, Glax, first of all, let's uh, have a little description of how Glax looks. Uh, so Glax has long black hair um, that's pushed to one side and the uh, other side is shaved off. There's a couple of earrings, a couple of um, scars on each of his arms uh, that are pretty uh, recent. Um, and he's just got like just basic like leather clothing um, and he carries around a grimoire. Okay. And uh, yeah, as you were traveling, uh, you first of all came upon Lycus Lysagoras. Um, Lycus, can you please explain your character? Yes. Uh, at first, you see kind of the outline of this slick elven man dressed in some fine-ish um, garments. But as you kind of focus back on who, who this individual really resembles, you see these silhouettes of massive horns coiled in his head. And he has these un, very un-elven hooves that make up the lower half of his body. Um, and he seems generally disdainful whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and as the two of you met on the road, you were able to make acquaintance. Um, this was sort of six, seven days ago. Um, and a couple of days later, you came across a fairy who appeared to be entirely fae-based. Um, Shira Everpedal, are you in a position to describe your character right now? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes, I can. Right. I'm playing... All right, Shira Repetal is a female with dark, a female fairy with dark green skin. She has aqua hair. It's long and has a ponytail on the back. She's got lime green eyes. Very small. She's about two, three. She's kind of a recluse and she just kind of reads her own little books and studies nature in the magical ways. But she does like to talk every once in a while with her meek little voice she's also uh easily very very easily distracted by anything spell related um, so uh given that uh shara has been seeing that like, the magical nature of this world as she's arrived it's probably been a long and curvaceous journey uh, <laughs> through the yeah. um through the forest um just a consideration, like us, um, both of these uh, beings with you are short, uh, one at three and a half and one and two and a half feet. Um, I'm assuming Lyca stands closer to six foot. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just about six one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as you guys have made your way through, what is ground you know with the forest? Um, you've probably spent quite a long time on the run, however. Um, as uh, when you first arrived in the forest, you realized that you weren't the only uh, plane of existence to have collided with the material plane. And unusual shadowy creatures 
uh, from another plane that you don't know where they came from and you don't really understand what they want, but they don't say anything. Uh, they move from shadow to shadow and they attack you every time you try and relax or take a rest. Um, and uh, so you probably spend most of your time moving away from the forest, forested area, uh, desperately looking for somewhere to take a decent night's sleep. Um, as you have broken out of this forest, you look down um, on the uh, on the remnants of an old city. Um, none of you would know about this city, of course. Um, uh, how old is Lycus? Um, check. He's about one seventy-five. Um, I'll take a history check with disadvantage then. History check disadvantage. Yep. Eight. Eight? I haven't got a fucking clue what place this is. It's a place. It's a place. Um, but you do know that these buildings are made of stone and it looks like a good place to take shelter. Um, as you move down into the city, uh, a storm begins to rumble ahead. And uh, one thing you notice is that as the lightning crackles out of the clouds straight away, you see what appear to be large fish made of lightning swimming through the air. After these clouds, um, you see purple rain that nobody sing um, coming from the sky um, that appears to be acidic in nature, and um, and this uh, it is corrosive to anything it touches. Uh, the storm is closing in from behind you. The way storms happen as well, they're instant, but they're only where the clouds are, and these clouds are drifting in towards you faster than you can run. Um, and you notice it's an electrical and an acidic storm. Um, it is, of course, raining ash as it always does these days. Um, though you probably notice that less in the forest and more so out in the um, in the city. But you are able to make your way into the city and um, still sort of vaguely on the run. You are confronted by two beasts in the road. Uh, is it two beasts? Yes, it is. Um, two beasts in the road. One of these is a sort of furry beast with the face of a sort of slightly angry raccoon. Um, but his eyes are flaming red. Um, this creature appears to be mad or insane. Um, the second creature that follows him is, uh, has a fish-like, uh, face, uh, with a large spike coming out the back of his head. Um, he has six legs, uh, and he, um, and they are sort of two, two, and two, like an extended horse, if you like. Um, and both of these, uh, sort of attempt to be protecting their territory, um, however, they seem to think the whole city is their territory. Um, I will need um, Lycus, um, Shira, and Glax to roll initiative, please. Nice, nice mid lane. And then with the 10. Okay, cool. Um, so at this point, um, the sort of beast with the burning eyes and the raccoon -y face um, pulls a sickle from his hip. Um, and with no warning whatsoever, he will dive forward. Oh, this is going to be really annoying because we've got two separate battle maps. Um, so just bail me a second. Um, if I do this. Uh, did that work perfectly? Yes, it did. Look at me. I'm so clever. Um, and, uh, yeah, E1 is actually going to come up to, um, yeah, no, this was right, uh, to Lycus. Um, the first attack, oh, I'm not rolling to everybody, sorry. Let me just do that. Uh, the first attack will be a natural 20 to hit you. It most certainly does. It does. Uh, that is 13 slashing damage to you, Lycus. Ow! And the second attack... Will be a twenty-four to hit you. As uh, for ten slashing damage. Uh, Glax, you're up. Uh, okay. So seeing these two enemies and seeing my recent friend get hacked to pieces, um, Glax will like, uh scared take a few steps backwards and quickly 
open his book of shadows and like rumble through the pages trying to find a spell and then uh, some pink mist will um, start releasing from the book and then from his hand as he extends out will like fire a beam of pink mist uh, and probably miss that's a ten to hit hit who sorry e1 or e2 uh, e1 that hits okay kick um uh that is nine um force damage okay um the beast appears wounded yeah that will be the end of my turn okay um and that will bring us to e2 uh, nice initiative guys grats um e2 will move up to shira um wait what? yeah there we go um and uh, this will attempt to raise, rear up, and hit you with its front front four paws. Holy shit. Um, I need a deck save, please. Um, Shira. Oh, that's a three. Um, don't worry about the scary big number in chat. Uh, that's 12 uh, bludgeoning damage. <laughs> that figure is halved. Um... Yep, yeah, and uh, after that, it will charge past you. Uh, Shari, you do get an attack of opportunity here. If you want to hit it with a stick. I guess. <laughs> I don't even know if you have a weapon that you can hit with for an attack of opportunity, but... Uh, an 11? Yep, yeah, that hits. Two damage. Okay. Um, that's some damage, I guess. Um... And uh, it will then slash at Glax. Uh, Glax, um, that is a 25 to hit you. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, 9 slashing damage. Okay, just for reference, these beasts are in front of you. And behind them is this um, sort of building that looks like it's well defensible. Um, it has two, mar two stone pillars at the front. Um, the entrance is sort of caved inwards, uh, but it's got a triangular roof that you know to be structurally sound. And you can sort of just about hear some humanoid voices coming from inside it that appear to be engaged in combat, but they do appear to be um, friendly uh, creatures. Um, I come to Lycus, what are you doing? Um, staggering backwards slightly. Oh, you're a little hurt, are you? A little hurt. Okay, uh, just for reference, these beasts, you have hit them? They yeah. don't look particularly injured. Ah, oh, this is great. This is great. Um, I'm just gonna kind of reach out with my palm widespread and say, this is just my lucky day. And uh, I'm gonna cast Decay on the one in front of me as it starts to wither up. So that's a constitution saving. Yep, rolling it to chat. That's a 22. That do pass. Um, yeah, that do pass. Um, so just for reference, the building is... Um, let's use E4 here. Uh, the building is here. Uh, that is where the entrance to the building is. Yeah, I don't think you take any damage. No, I don't think I do either. Cool. Um... Can't really stay here. Nope. Mm. Alright. I guess I'll try to run. Yep. That's um, sort of very sensible. I'm gonna go around the left side. Take my 35 feet of movement all the way towards the building. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, so uh, you are the L. Um, you are able to, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, yeah, you're able to get sort of close, I'll move you around this side, uh, you're able to get to the entrance of the door, and at this point you will see, um, the widespread wings of an Aarakocra, um, sort of just through the doorway, um, what kind of weapon does, uh, Fenis use? Uh, first and foremost, primarily a longbow. Okay, cool. Um, he's got a longbow in his left hand, and he's sort of... He's got one wing out, and he's cackling man maniacally. 
Um, you gather that there is uh, some influence of magic there. Uh, in front of that, you see an ASMR holding greatsword. Is that correct? No, I got a battle axe. You got a battle axe. Yeah, okay, cool. No, you had a great sword in your last campaign. You can have a battle axe in this That's one. True. We're on something different. Um, yeah, you see a, a battle axe wielding ASMR holding his ground and a furbolg further in. Um, currently, no weapon, is that correct? Or has he got a staff? Muted. Club and a shield. A club and a shield. Right, okay. Um, they appear better armed than you guys. Um, Shira, <laughs> you are up. We just see those two uh, monsters that are hitting us, and then the Aragakra, or is that? Just uh, no, no. You see the two monsters hitting you, and then you see like the doorway to what looks like shelter. I think Lycus has sort of called out that he's fleeing for shelter. Okay. Um. Uh, is there? Any... Hold on, I can just look. There it is. No, you're not in range to prevent to provoke an opportunity attack. And also, you may notice that Lycus didn't get attacked either. I'm gonna run after him then. Uh, movement speed, please. Oh, I've got that 30? actually here. 30, yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, you will have to land to get through that doorway. Um, unless, actually, you know, you're only three foot tall. You will be able to go through it. It's sort of off a foot off the ground. Um, you can't I'd see the... I'd also say that, just for the record, I'd, if I'm flying at all, it'd be normal human height. I'd be about... I'd never be, like, huge off the ground unless I specifically tell you. Okay. Um, Just for... So you don't have to think about that shit all the time. Yeah. Um... um is, okay. Is E4 in vision of me? Uh, E4 is the doorway. I was just using it to okay, show okay, where the door okay. was. Um... <laughs> thanks for that, Josh. I guess I can turn around and fireball one of the monsters. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think definitely that would make a lot of sense. Oh. He hit E1, right? Um, He was hit by E1. Uh, Lycus didn't right. attempt to hit anything. He failed miserably. I attempted. Uh, I attempted. <laughs> hey, it's a thought that counts. I'll shoot E1. Uh, cool. Um, yep. Yeah. Roll to hit, please. I will not shoot E1 unless uh, a 10 hits him. A 10 is what your other two uh, allies got, and it did hit. A 10 hits. Oh. No armor class oh, book hopes these ones. Damage. Yeah, um, it still looks fairly unwounded. Um, it's kind of chilling. Um, I don't like this. No, I can't imagine you do. Um, who have I missed in the combat? Oh, never mind. Oh, Glax, you're in trouble, sir. Um, oh, no, you're not. Never mind. That's E1. Okay. Uh, E1 is going to pursue his friend Lycus. Oh, no. Luckily for you, you can't quite get in range. <laughs> um... Yep, yeah, uh, Glax, you're up. Yes. Um, okay. Well, at this moment, you're kind of thinking, you know, I know I just met these guys, but still. <laughs> Could have at least said something. They them. did. They did. Uh, I did say that, um, Lycus called out, I'm running for shelter, as he left. Yeah. He just didn't say it in character because, well, he wasn't thinking straight. Um. Uh, okay. So, um, Glax is just gonna, like, like close his book and hold it really tight to his chest and then as pink mist surrounds his body he's gonna misty step 30 foot northeast okay build me a second i know that seems counterintuitive but uh it's necessary um we're gonna flip the battle map okay uh that'll do all sorts of weird things to you guys' minds but it is what it is. Um, it's the only way I could. Okay. It's the only way I could work out of doing this. Ooh, you two are having a fucking real party together. Party. Um, okay, beautiful. Um, two, three, four, five, six. Fantastic. Uh, Glax, uh, you've used your misty step. Um, as you turn, as you arrive in the room, um, you can either turn back and see E one and E two coming towards the doorway. The doorway is between. Um, Kiaran and, uh, Verdon, okay? Um, you also look over to your left and you see a very small creature, E3. Um, I think mean, that's not where I was aiming, but sure. <laughs> no, I know, I had to flip the map and it wasn't very simple. Um, um, okay, yeah, so, like, as I reappear, 
I'll turn around. You still got your movement speed, yeah? So if yeah, you want to be um, somewhere else. I'll quickly open my book back up. Uh huh. Um, and fire another beam of pink mist um, at E1. Yep. That's 19 to hit. Yep. Uh, does, your, does this push them back always, or just if you choose? You don't push them back at all. Oh, you changed that. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I never had that. What? No. You did. You said you had the pushback on it. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> uh, what invocation do you have instead, then? Uh, first of all, that's 10 false damage. Um, yeah. And I will also use my Fear of the Small um, to add 3 damage to that, so that's 13 overall. Okay, a decent hit. Um, I have... What? A decent hit. Yeah. Um, I have a Book of Ancient Secrets, so I learned 2 rituals, and I can... Start you went for the ritual class, yeah, I remember. Rituals. Yeah. Um, an agonizing blast. And I have agonizing blast. Yeah, yeah, cool. Blast. Okay, that's fine. Um, that brings us to E two. Um, E two is going to, oh, E two is going to make it through this door. Um, Kiaran, a deck save, please. Nine. That is a failure. Ignore the big scary number on your. Well, that's not that scary. Uh, nine bludgeoning damage. Um, and you are prone. And then he will attack you with his sickle. Um, that is a 22 to hit. I'll hit. Jesus. Um, that's 10 damage. I'm down. And then um, he will swing out at Verdon. Uh, Verdon, that's a 10 to hit. I ain't gonna take a turn. <laughs> no, that's not hit. Okay. Um, that brings us to... Verdon. Uh, oh, sorry, Fainus, did you succeed your wisdom save the second time round? What was your second wisdom save at the end of your turn? It was a seven, never mind. Um, yeah, that brings us to Verdon. Uh, fuck. Uh, what is in front of me? What just happened? Mm, things went bad. Oh, sorry, um, Kiara, and I do need a death save as well from you, please. That was your turn. Alright, let's take a death save. Twelve. Okay, uh, congrats. Yeah, go on, bud. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna go up and attack it, I guess. Uh-huh. Um... Yep, swing. Uh, fourteen. Yep, that hits. Alright, I'm gonna first level Divine Smite. Good decision. Uh, Mike is just sitting there going, I've gotta heal this shit! <laughs> Great! <laughs> uh, uh, eight damage? Yeah, that's eight damage. Okay, he's then, wounded. I'm a... What is a Divine Smite again? I forgot. Oh, hold on. Do I need to reverse the f No, the wrong creature. Okay. Alright, that's an uh, extra two damage. Oh, wait, and then also plus three. What? Oh, wait, no, I gotta activate that. Never mind. It's plus ten, right? First level Divine Smite. Plus ten damage. Uh, yeah, no, I was thinking of Radiant Soul. You get an extra three Radiant damage, but because I have my wings out, so I didn't know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yep, yeah, okay, he's severely wounded. Um, you too. And does that conclude your turn, Lycus? If I sanctuaried, if I sh uh, cat, oh wait, yeah, no, I can, I could. If I sanctuaried, uh, what's his name? Would that help him with anything? Oh, what's his name? Doesn't uh, tell me anything. Kiaren. Uh, Kiaren. Oh, when he's down? Yeah, if I cast sanctuary. Yeah, they'd have to make a wisdom save on attacking him as long as uh, he doesn't attack. Uh, then I shall bonus action cast Sanctuary. Oh, great. That's what I'd like to see. Um, what was Lycus's initiative, sorry? Um. Let me just put this in here. Um, Glax, your initiative was? Uh, 15, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, I'm just transferring it over to both. And uh, Shira, I've got you down with a 6. Okay, that's fine. Um, 
Yep, uh, that brings us to Lycus. Uh, no, it doesn't. It brings us to E3. The lovely E3. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, that first. Um, Shira, I need a wisdom save, please. There's no way. That's a nat one. Oof! Um, in that case, I also... Uh, no, okay, and we'll hold it there. Um, I will need you to roll a d10 on your turn. Um, Lycus, you're up. Okay. I will... As, as I burst into the room, I'll just say, hope we're not too late to the party, yeah. We brought some plus ones. And then, um... I'll take a, take a leap back uh, towards... Uh, Let's see, who do I want to go towards? I'll go towards Shira. Just, I want to be back to back. Or front mm -hmm. to back. I don't care. Yep. I don't want to be alone. And then, uh. Die together. I'm gonna, um. Ah, I must. I'll, I'll turn to, uh, to Kieran. And I'll say, Ah, don't be shy. We're only getting started. And, uh, cast Healing Word on him. Mm hmm. Don't thank him yet. You don't know how much he's going to give you. That's six. It's not bad. Okay. It's better than zero. I mean, he's yeah. off. Yeah, and for your action? Uh, like this. I'm actually going to take... Uh, I'm going to use my reaction. Well, what? first, I have a question. What's uh, what's going on in the ceiling of this chamber? Um, it's, it's quite intact. There are a few little holes that are letting through shafts of light. Um, but most of the light is coming through the side wall, actually. Um, yeah, there's uh, the ceiling's mostly like intact. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you're going up there. Okay. I would like to, uh, as my reaction, a swoop. And, uh, yep. uh, in 60 foot flying speed. And just rock I'm sorry, it. but you can't cast two spells in one turn. I can't. That's right. <laughs> a silly goose. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, no. Um, you can uh, cast a cantrip or you can attack with a weapon, but you can't uh, cast two spells in a turn. Even though it's a reaction. I'll, uh, I'll point my, my finger gun at E3 and say, How about you have a little decay? Okay. Um, that's E3, yeah. Um, that's a con save on E3. There's also 15. It's actually a, a roll to hit. I'm saying this wrong. Yeah. Make a, make a range. That stuff. makes more sense. Yeah, it's just a 1d10 of a necrotic on a ranged attack, right? Yeah. yeah. I was reading the wrong spell earlier. Uh, that's 13. Cool. Uh, yep, yeah, that'll hit. Yay. Five decay damage. Okay, bear with me a second. Let me read this ability. Alright, who's the turkey? Okay, uh, you see that uh, he seems to negate the damage with a bright purple shield, and he seems to regain some vigor. Um, you may take in that he's used his intera his uh, reaction. Uh, Fainus, you're up. Um, you're, st you're still laughing like a maniac. Okay, cool, yeah. Uh, so that's a success. You will have your turn next turn. Shira, you're up. First things first, I'm going to fly into the air as high as I can go. Uh, yep. Absolutely fine. Uh, uh, obviously, I, my map is not 3D, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know yeah. that you, I know you've got up in the air. Uh, yep. Yeah. Don't think I didn't bring in a ranged attack, fool. Oh, sorry, Shira, you failed your wisdom save, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, let me just roll a d10 for you first. Oh, that's a d100. That's going to be confusing. Um, <laughs> Divide whatever you get by 10. Uh, what did I get? What did I get? Five. Where did it go? I got a five. Okay. Hey, I got uh, a five too. Um. Uh, you may. Uh, oh, sorry. The creature does not move or take actions this turn. Stay where you are, Shira. Um, that's your turn over. It's confusion if you didn't guess. Um, Kiara, you're up. Oh, baby, it's finally my time. Um, I'll turn to the uh, man who healed me, and I'll say, I appreciate your candor, brother. And I'll turn to the the thing that smote me down just a few moments before, and you'll see as my 
hand slowly starts to shift into a claw, and I will swipe at him. Let me get this straight. You nearly died, and you've decided the answer is a cantrip. Okay. Absolutely. That's 11 to hit on E2. <laughs> it will hit. Fuck oh, yeah. That'll be 6 damage. Okay. Um, that is actually enough to kill it. <laughs> How annoying that you're not punished for your silly decision. Um, bonus action. And as a bonus action, I will look to the party and I'll say, looks like you guys need something a little bit more. And you'll see me begin to shift from my natural form into that of a bear with brown fur. As I roar. Did also, you say, I did say you, Moon, did I just hear I hate you already? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, uh, dude. I, 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 like, as, uh, as, as previously already discussed, I do not have the ability to manipulate this on extra for some reason. But I do know that I have... Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. that's fine. Um, you... I have my no, 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 okay, so the, the hit points of the bear go in your temp HP. Yeah. Um, because once that gets to zero, you go back to your normal HP. Um, and then you, you'll just have to manual roll and add whatever modifiers are there. Yeah. Uh, but obviously that there, concludes yeah. your turn, yeah, because you've had yeah, action that, bonus action. Because you wasted it with your stupid primal savagery bollocks. Um... <laughs> you the demon thing. Okay, um... That brings us to E1. Huh. Who's in the doorway? Uh, a bear. Boom. Uh, <laughs> deck save, please, bear. Well, Natty 20. Um, do, 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 do. That'll be a 12. With okay, no that's 9 that. bludgeoning damage. 9. And you are knocked prone. Yeah. Our bear just immediately gets not prone. Yeah, um, this creature sort of leapt in with these double sort of iron boots um, and smashed you into the ground. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Uh, is, this, is this the fish? Um, this is the uh, raccoon. The fish is dead. If that was on me, yes, that is it. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a, I know it's a hit. Um, yeah, you take nine uh, damage. Um, and the second one is a 12 to hit you. Um, I'll hit. Yeah, uh, you don't have much other classes as a bear. I take the bear's AC, yes. Yep, yep. Um, it's right. six. Six more slashing damage on you. Um, Glax, you're up. Yeah. You just got fucked, bro. Mm hmm. Uh, I am gonna turn to E3. Yeah. E3 is. Has E3 been hit much? Uh, E3 has not been hit at all, except for the one time that something came at him and a purple shield arrived, and he seemed to regain yeah. some vitality. Um. Yeah, so I'll I'll flick. He the came pages. in injured. Okay. Um, I'll flick through the pages of my book. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, pink mist will envelop him. Um, and that's me casting hex. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I'll flick <coughs> his I was on, and I'll le um throw out another beam of pink mist. Yep. Towards him. That is a 17 to hit. That will hit. But can't use his reaction again. That is 7 force damage mm -hmm. and 2 necrotic damage. 2. Yes. You bring the creature to its knees with damage. Um, <laughs> close, but not quite. Um, Glax, does that can creature turn? It does. Okay, Verdon, you're up. Uh, I must help the bear. Yes, uh, yes, you must. Bear! Um, <laughs> the bear, the bear. Okay, uh, because of his, uh, because he is prone, you will not be flanking. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, yes, that's why I said it. Wish. <laughs> yes, that is also true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I got a turn master. Uh, can yeah, it would be nice. Way, is there any way with uh, with a twenty, uh, am I within twenty feet of E three? I'm assuming I'm not. I don't know why you would assume such a thing. E three is eighteen feet away from you. 
This is oh. dictated by these one, two, three, four squares of five foot each. Uh, then <laughs> I am going to cast uh, sleep. Sick. Um. On E one. Yep. E three goes to sleep. Uh, what is your five D eight, please? Uh, let me roll, and we will see. <laughs> Good luck with this. Nineteen. No. No. E3 is asleep. Okay. Um, did you just put an enemy with one health? <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, but he was trying to do both. I was trying to hit both of them, uh, but that's my turn. Okay, no bonus action for you. Like us, you're up. Okay. All right. Okay. Who, who is uh, who's sleeping? E3 is asleep. E1 is looking somewhat injured. A little bit. There's a couple of scrapes and bruises on him. No, E2 was nearly dead. Um, yeah. And then died. E1 has been hit once. I'm looking rather injured too. Yep, um, you are. I should probably not engage. Um, this, is, this, this, uh, this little, this little uh, quickling looking guy. Does he, uh, does he appear to be like... He's just chilling. He still looked damaged, right? E three. Yeah. He's asleep, and he's severely damaged. He was brought to his knees with damage. In fact, he had one HP. Huh. But he's sleeping like a baby. Yeah, he's sleeping like a baby, and he will be for a while. Um, perhaps you might turn your concerns towards yeah, yourself. You not, never know who else might be coming. This is not a problem. Um, I'll just kind of. I'm gonna move uh up, kind of the the northwest, kind of around the bear. Um, okay, just to tell you, the bear is holding the doorway. Oh. I shoot under the bear. <laughs> yeah, well, the bear's on the floor, so you can shoot over the bear. Well, uh, over the bear. Oh, yeah. Onto the bear and shoot. <laughs> you can shoot straight over the bear. The bear is prone. I do a little hop, give him the thing, and I'm just gonna, like, give shoot the this. Finger. Shoot a ray of acid. In, uh, uh, that's a deck save, right? It is. 17? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. Cool. That's no damage. Great. Um, bonus action? This fucking sucks. <laughs> You're the one who keeps throwing cantrips at people. Does this look it's like a cantrip, cantrip fight to you? No, it's not a cantrip. It's a first level spell. What, acid splash? Get out of here. Get out of here. No, that was Tasha's costume. Oh, um... Yeah. Yeah. Um, um. Anyways... I'm just gonna slink back, and I, I'm just gonna sit down and begin okay. pouting. Cool. Um, you can pout there. Um, I, I, I want to go over and hang out with E3 and just like pat my little buddy. Uh, the bear is still under sanctuary. So mm-hmm. Just when he attacks again, he has to. Debate yeah, I know. That's not his turn yet. Um, Shira, uh, you're up. Do I get a turn? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Technically, that that would have lasted a minute, but he was put to sleep, so you're all right. <laughs> yeah, see, look, I did something. <laughs> he didn't. He did confuse him. We're still gonna fire about this guy because I just looked at my spells and I have taken no offensive spells. Really? Aren't you evocation? <laughs> just like my wizard. <laughs> but you're an evocation <laughs> wizard. Um, okay, you can prep some different shit next fight. What have you brought? Like, fly and shit? Or Wait, like... Is that fucking helpful? No. Oh, he literally is. Oh, you pre like you've prepped a bunch of rituals? No. No, you've prepped uh, mage armor and shield. Um, you have five spells left to prep. I'll let you do that in the next time we take a moment. Um, that's, that's what... Okay. You, you haven't... You haven't, uh, prepped no offensive spells. You've prepped no spells. Um. <laughs> Which one? E1, yeah? Yeah, yeah cool. Roll ahead. Uh, well, That's a nat one. It's a nat one. Nat one will always miss. Um, cool. Um, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good plan. Uh, I've lost the in initiative order. Um, Kieran. Uh, you're up. Uh, half your movement speed to stand up. Garen will stand up. Uh, half oh, sorry. Speed. 
just uh, bear with me a second, because uh, I seem to have failed to cue the music. I don't know why. We will bear with for one moment. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the, and it's funniest when you have to explain it. Um, go on, Karen. So Karen will get back up on his four paws, and you'll see him uh, kind of stand up upon two of them to attempt to swap at e E1 with his claws um, as. He gets up on his hind legs and he just swaps at him with all his force. Um, um, oh, I'm really sorry, Fennis. I'll come back to you. That'll be a 15 to hit? Uh, yep. Alright, sorry. I'm trying to look at this while I do it. Sorry, I've just noticed I've skipped Fennis' turn. I'll get to you in a second, Jimmy. Yeah, my apologies. Um, that's two it's because I'm running two encounters. Yeah. Ah. Alright, so that'll be... Uh, 12 damage on Ewan. Okay, yeah, he chill him. And then I will, uh, after slapping at him, I will turn my head and I will attempt to bite him in the throat as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that will be a, uh, 15 to hit. Little hit. Alright, let me see what that damage is. Sorry, I have to keep going back to this chart. Um, 1d8. It should stay on your screen when you roll, mate. It, it's disappearing every single time I do it. I Click the lock. I, uh, Click the padlock. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> right, so that's uh, be, uh, that's enough. That'll be uh, nine damage. Okay, cool. Um, as E1 goes down, I turn to Fennis. Um, Fennis, you have one guy uh, asleep and close to death in the corner. Okay, well, I'm going to take my... Uh bow and actually try to fire an arrow. Advantage. Yep, let's see if I can actually roll this time. Uh, 17 to hit. Mm. Cool. Um, and as your arrow takes the little beast in the throat, um, your party is now together. Um, you notice in the storm that other creatures are moving around out in the storm. Uh, as you look to your right, you see some old wooden boards. Um... That appear to be, uh, sort of, they're still somewhat intact. Um, they're not running too much away. Um, and you'd be able to... Kind of cover that arrow that I shot at the yep, game. yep, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay. most of the time I would say no, but considering you shot him, uh, while he was asleep from ten foot away, I'd say yes, um, in future we'll roll for recollecting arrows. However, guys, uh, you notice, uh, that, uh, there are some wooden boards around... Um, you've got two window entrances and one door entrance. The two window entrances are at the back of the hall, and the door is at the front. Um, you also notice that there are the remnants of a campfire um, at the back right of the room, um, near where Karen was, actually, that you'd be able to light. Um, you're all going to need a long rest tonight. It's For some of you, it's been three or four days since you've had a long rest. Um, but please do not take said long rest. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to barricade up the walls. Uh, who would be the person lifting these large boards? Oh, bye. Possibly the person that we just lost. Um, nope. No, not him. Oh, me. If two and a half foot goblin is going to be the guy picking up your boards, you've got a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, <you're> right. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead, Tuff. Carry on. Uh, yeah, I'll take the, I'll, I'll take the wood and I'll start covering, uh, like the, the walls and the doors and okay um i need a strength check and then i want to know how you're getting it to stay in place all right josh your camera's not working kicking around anywhere no That's not to mention you can't nail things into stone uh okay so you will be able you will be able to do this as long as somebody gives you some assistance um you're uh, a bear uh yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, you, you'll see me start to transform back into my fur bulk form um, and you'll see that there's minor discrepancies as part of him. It does take a little bit longer to transform back into that of his natural form. Um, maybe a couple of his nails are a little bit longer and his mouth might be a little bit more extended as, as time takes longer for him to adjust back. Um, he will, uh, not quite assist with this, but you'll see him begin to kind of, uh, transform into that of a mole slightly as he kind of digs underneath the earth 
and assist him by bringing the earth up from underneath to help solidify those boards into the wall. Nice, nice. I like it. Um, so yeah, these uh, these boards get sunk slightly into the wall, um, and it is not long before you hear this sort of crackling of thunder from outside. Um, the lightning has reached this building. Uh, the entire building shakes occasionally. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to confirm for me the watching order for the rest of the campaign. I'll take first. Uh, 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 you will need to watch in twos. Uh, uh, if anybody with the... Uh, with the uh, and this is kind of metagaming, I will, I will say, but um, if anybody with a lower perception wants to tune up with me, because I do know I have... Before we get to that, does anybody require less than eight hours for a long rest? Unless I get to keep my elven features, I don't think so. Uh, no, I don't see why you would keep your elven features. Um, you've been transformed by a god. Um, and you've been transformed into a goat. Um, yeah. I think it's fair to say goat would weaken you. I am going to say Verdon. Four hours sleep, reverie. Okay? Um, you can add a note for that. Um, I think that makes sense. I like that. Um, do the fairies need eight hours rest? Okay, cool. Um, so, over the course of the night, I need four two-hour watches. Um, each of you will get six hours of sleep and two hours of watch. Um, but uh, a couple of you will... Um... Sorry, hold on. Yeah, Verdon, you're going to have to do two. All right, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, I can take the... I'll take the last two watches. I'll join whoever wants to join me on those Okay. Two. So we're only taking a short rest. No, uh, I, I need the rests for a long rest. Um, we're, we're setting up our watch order. Uh, yeah, I'll take um, one of the watches that isn't with... Um, Kiaren? Kiaren. Yeah, okay, so... I also have a 17 perception, just so... Or passive perception, just... Yeah. So, I'm, so me and uh, Kiaren. Um, so, Glax, are you happy to take number one? You'll probably be the first. Actually, if if I put you on rest two, you can short rest. Sure. Yeah. Um. Because you don't. Do you need to rest? Long rest. Um. I think you still my... need to, right? You. You I didn't mean, take that. You didn't I take think the moon. I do in terms of like exhaustion. Yeah, you didn't take the moon of ultra invocation. No, but in terms of like my features and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. All short rest. Um. So what we're gonna do is, and the are the first after the first rest, you may each take a short rest. And then, if you make it to the end of the night, you get the long rest. Yeah? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Who is going to risk it and not take the short rest at the beginning? And don't base this on your current HPs. This is going to be for the rest of the campaign. Which two characters are most likely to be able to stand up? Um, Fennis, I've put you second with Glax because you had the perception like Kieran did. Yeah. Um, can I suggest perhaps Lycus because you have the ability to heal uh, if it's an emergency? Anyways. Um, yep, so Kieran and Lycus, Fennis and Glax, um, and then it's gonna be, uh, Shira, and probably Fennis again, um, Dude, we need um, another, we need an elf in here, bro, that's so helpful. I'm right here. Uh, we need a helpful elf. <laughs> That's Damn. Right. Okay. As uh, like Theory and I are kind of getting situated, I'm gonna look for a, a like a nice-ish, like a round piece of stone, and um, kind of. Crunch it in my hand real quick, and uh, summon my homunculus servant. There's this little tiny cyclops with a square head. I'll, and, uh, uh, we're gonna begin playing rock paper scissors. Uh, that, 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 that's Lycus, score. correct? Is it um, only yes. for I, I'll, I'll look at Lycus as he uh, crushes that rock and say, "There's no need to damage nature like that, brother. Um, if you if you want to do." No. You, Misunderstand. I'm giving it life. I mean, I can do just the same. I'll uh, begin to take a rock and and begin to shape it, mold it, 
different things in my hand and see if you wanted to do something like that. There's no need to destroy it like that. I can bring it shape. Oh, that would be great. My my friend here, he he likes to you know, absorb whatever I give him. But yeah, I would appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you guys have boarded up, uh, Kieran and Lycus, you'll be taking the first rest. Um, and the rest of you, obviously, uh, the first watch, um, and the rest of you will uh, take a rest. Um, it's not long before Kieran and Lycus, you both hear pounding on the uh, boards. This is worrisome. Yeah, I'll turn to him and ask him if, uh, I'll tell him... Um, you know, I'm feeling slightly woozy from the fight before. If there's anything that you possibly can do about that, that'd be helpful. But I can attempt to stick to us a little bit more before you know, maybe we pass on the watch to the next. Well, my organs are hardly intact, but I, I'll help. Oh wait, uh, uh, can I say? Can I have said that before that I would have gone to whoever was most heal, uh, injured? I would have healed them. Yeah, um, I think it's fair to say uh, you're gonna lay on hands. Yeah, What's your current value for Leon Hands? Uh, I have 15, so I'd split it with 7. I think, um, no, I think you'd be giving 10 to uh, Lycus and uh, 5 to Kieran. That works too. And we'll put like them both at 11 and 12 HP. Um, so that's why, like, like I said, 1 HP. Um. <laughs> uh, I have 5, so your first kind of dead. <laughs> teetering on the edge of death. Okay, You're as this really. as this thumping continues on the boards, um, what are you guys doing? Are you engaging with them? My little homunculus goes over to the boards and just puts his hand on them. Okay, but you're yeah. you're not uh, you're not attempting to speak with the people who are pounding on the board, or uh, seeing uh, his yeah. attempt to do that, I'll uh, um, I'll continue. You'll see me as I attempt to move the earth around me a little bit more you'll see my shape kind of confer and change around me as i into that That's of cool. more earth-like creatures um such as a mole or a, a beaver as i slowly move the earth around and i begin to fortify the walls around us slightly i'll walk up to that door that they're currently banging on and i'll put out a slight request and i'll say uh who are you what might you be uh what might you be here for uh, what language are you speaking in? I, I, I'll speak in common at first. Okay, uh, the response you get is not in common. Um, it is instead in Sylvan. Uh, I'll recognize that response, that which I've got. I think both of you speak Sylvan, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, they tell you... Uh, well, yeah, but you're asleep, mate. Um, yeah, uh, cool. Uh, they tell you that uh, they need shelter from the mighty beast that's chasing them. I'll, I'll inquire. I mean, I'll look towards my partner to the side, kind of give a shrug, and I'll say... I'm usually a good judge of character. Uh, can I roll an insight check? Uh, a disadvantage. You can't see them. Perfect. Uh, yes, Venice. Uh, this building's quite large. It's a temple. You guys are at the back. 21. Okay, uh, 21 uh, with disadvantage? Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, it appears that this uh, person is telling the truth, that they are running from something larger. Um, but you do recognize in the tone of the voice that perhaps they are not um, entirely humanoid. Yeah, we don't discriminate here. Racist. Yeah, I mean, uh, they seem to be in trouble. Is it worth risking ourselves to bring them in? I don't know if that's entirely a good choice, but uh, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, I'll turn to him and I'll say, let me, let me just take a little peek out the door, just a little gander, and I'll uh, peek the door open just a smidgen of an inch. And uh, what do you mean you'll peek the door open? You sunk the boards into the into the wall. You've got to just oh, peek true. through that. Um, I, yeah, that, that is true. I'll, uh... I'll ask, uh, I'll ask the person behind the wall. Um, my friend here senses that you might not be that of, uh, of a natural humanoid. Can I ask uh, what, what you might be? Um, the response you get is uh, quite interesting. Um, 
it basically amounts to we are lots. We are legion. Uh, yeah, sort of similar to that vibe. Um, similar to the we are legion vibe. Um, yeah, over and uh, we are lots. That's unsettling. Uh, but it then does follow that up with we bring food. Yeah. I, I, I naturally, I'll turn to my, my partner and I'll say, I feel like there's no life that really needs to be lost at this point. Uh, if, if, we, if we can save them from the impending doom that seems to be upon them, I don't, I don't see any wrong with that. But uh, I will I say would... that... Go on, Mike. I wouldn't choose that, but uh, to your discretion, I'm just here to play the game. Uh, I mean, I, I I will value your opinion. Um, I really don't. Let's go ahead and see how this ever. goes. I'm a little peckish myself. Uh, you you'll see me slightly transform once again into that of a mole as I lower the uh, the earth surrounding that wall mm -hmm. back into the ground. And, and uh, I'm I'm going to hold you guys there. Um, Everybody else, uh, so Verdon, Glax, um, Fennis, and Shira, take a short rest, please. Um, oh, yeah. And then, um, hey, we're gonna die. Uh, Glax, you had a question as well? Have I heard it? Like, no, no, so I, the way I've ruled it, because it's quite a large building, um, and you guys are, at this point, used to dealing with problems in the world. All of you are quite hurt as well. Um, it's fair to say that you guys were asleep in minutes, um, and you're trusting the protection of your companions. Go on. Well, I, if I would have short rested, especially because I'm the next to watch, my short rest would have only been an hour. It has only been an hour. Uh, um, however, at this point, um, you are going to open the door, yes? Um, so I'm as the... going to slightly smidge and open the door, not okay. really all the way. And what you see is this beast. Um, he appears to have uh, legs like a spider, clawed arms. Um, and an unusual pincer-shaped face, but he speaks in good Sylvan. Um, this is a creature from the Feywilds. Um, you may have encountered this before. Um, Lycus, I will take a Arcana or Nature check, whichever you prefer, please. Yeah. Uh, whoever's typing, please do so with your microphone muted. Yeah, whichever you choose. That's good nature. A solid 20. The best kind of 20s. Well, brain blast. Um, so you know that these animals are sort of livestock raisers in the Feywilds. Um, and sure enough, as you look behind them, you see various... Uh, they're black, feathered, dark, red-eyed chickens, basically, is the way I can put it. Um, otherwise known as abyssal chickens. Uh, that kind of chicken. I'll, uh, I'll look to this individual and say, wow, it's pretty impressive that you were able to keep all these things in the current climate we're in. Uh, come in, please. As I said, I brought dinner. I'm very thankful. The dinner uh, that's lively. a suggestion of my friend. I'll, uh, I'll door the rest of the way in a little bit. Okay, uh, as soon as the door opens a little bit further, he teleports up onto the ceiling. Roll initiative. And what, and what will the livestock around him do? Uh, walk in the door. Roll initiative. Oh, fuck. Well, that's quite unfortunate, but alright. Oh, right. sorry, just uh, hold on one second. Sorry, I said roll initiative before I click the button. Um, oh, totally come the hell on. Um, oh, sorry, it's every time I load up, it's not got the newest player in. Um, this case, it didn't have either Shira or Kieran. Yeah, don't worry. I'll roll again. I'll roll again. No, no stress. Yeah, I'm going to ask you all to roll again. No aggression on his voice? Uh, no, no, he's still not aggressive. Oh. Okay. We're just keeping things it's in a, order. It's the creature that's coming after We're him. Just keeping things in order. Someone ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all be like him. Oh, well, hell, man. I trust anything. We need the, we need the comedic relief. <laughs> Let me know when you want to give me when you want rolls. By the way, James. Oh, uh, I wanted rolls now. All right, I will. I've got a nine game. on Verdon. Is that correct? But, oh my oh. fucking god! Sorry, it's still being shit. Um, in fact, you know what? We're gonna take a short break before this. Roger.
Yeah, hello, hello. Welcome oh, back hello. Uh, to the second half Hi. of our episode. Uh, before anything, um, I would like you guys to position yourselves. So, Kiaran and Lycus, you are standing watch. Kiaran, are you currently in Furbolg form, yes? I'm currently in Furbolg form, correct. Okay, you did unbear. I thought you said that, but I was just making I sure. Did, yes. Okay, and the rest of you, um, is it fair to say Fennis at the very back? Watching the other door? Mm, no, more like on one of the sides, halfway up. Oh, okay. Um, so, you, well, you won't be able to be halfway up, because then you, yeah, um, it's not a big battle map. Um, Shira, would you be close to the back windows, or sort of in the little group next to the campfire? The ceiling. On the ceiling? Um, probably not while you're asleep. Um, this is while you are resting, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do think Create a sling in the ceiling. And, then and Verdon, you'd probably be watching the back doors, right? Like, you'll be sleeping in front of the back door, so you'll be the first to respond. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, we have ourselves some chickens. Let's, uh, ah, let's yeah. do some. Yep, some abyssal chickens. Chicken. Jamel should have known That's this was coming. Chicken. I did talk oh, to you about abyssal chickens. chickens. Oh, yes. They're They're actually real chickens. enemies. That's uh, my hole is totally loose. How funky, though, is your chicken? <laughs> I'm um, gonna have to stop you guys from continuing, or you will be being sued. Uh, uh, that is copyright. Yeah, something you stole? <laughs> yes, and now own. own. Thank you very much. I don't recall you owning that, but go off, kid. Okay, so as you recall, uh, you had a strange creature and his chickens in the room with you. And they said they were running from something, and what you hear as this beast arrives outside is he doesn't attempt to come in. Instead, he makes a call out in Abyssal. Does anybody speak Abyssal? No, fuck. I thought I, I spoke it, I don't. No. Okay, assuming that nobody says that. Um, you do understand, however, um, Lycus and Shira, I will take... Uh, actually, not Lycus, sorry, Glax and Shira. I will take an Arcana check, please. Uh, Glax, yours is for more instinctive understanding. Shira, it's to see if you've ever read of something like this. 19. Great, okay, that's all I need. Um, uh, Shira, you begin to realize that this is sort of a command phrase, perhaps? And at that moment, without any hesitation, the chickens begin to attack. Um, attack what? Hold it. Hold um, it. Well, everything. Um, so the first one is going to come up behind Kiaran. Are they going to attack each other? Um, that's a glorious 7 and a 20 to hit. Second will hit. Um, 4 slashing damage. Uh, the next one is E5. Um, he's going to run up to one of the sleeping players. Um, you guys would awake at the sound of this. Grrr! So it's not going to be an advantage. I will give you the time to stand up. Um, you may take reactions. Um, that is a... Oh, sorry. I'm holding to myself. Let me make sure I'm holding to everybody. Uh, that's an 8 to hit you, Fennis. Nope. And a 13. Nope. Um, then we've come to E4. Um, E4 is going to charge up to Glax. Um, it takes a little peck at you. Um, that's an 11 to hit. That misses. And then it's going to try and rake you with its claws. Uh, that's a 20 to hit. And that is 5. Slashing damage. Kiaran, you're up. Um, uh, you'll see Kiaran um, turn towards... Is he outside of the door right now? Who? The door is between Kiaran and um, Lycus and faces so outwards. So he stepped into the building. Oh, he teleported onto the ceiling, remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, I guess... He's on the point, ceiling. I'll, uh... Uh, you, you'll see me... Uh, semi-shift into... A, a bit... A bit of a fairy, almost, as I, uh... As I cast fairy fire on T6. Okay. Um, so as your hands turn a sort of mystical, unusual colour... Um, yeah. and purple light sort of bursts out from you. Um, E6, you said. One, two, three, four. Um, you're gonna hit four, six, two, one, and three. You're casting fairy fire, yeah? It's a 20-foot cube. Yep. Okay, um, number four, dex. Um, it's a 15 save. 
Uh, so four succeeds, uh, two succeeds, three fails, one fails, and then E6. He's got a plus three modifier, but he rolled a three. So six, one, and three off currently ferry fired. Um, E3 has a little further away than he should be. There we go. And uh, with the disgusting sounding laugh coming out of his throat as he semi begins to shift into a different body, you notice that Kiaren has shifted into the body of a giant hyena. Okay, uh, that is a large beast or a medium beast? Large. Okay, um, I'm not actually going to increase your counter size because I just think that's more a sort of... It's blockier, you know? I still think I'm it will take up a five-foot space. Large, yeah, well, not only that, but I'm I'm still ruling five-foot as your space that you take up. Um, cool, does that conclude your turn, Kieran? Uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay. You are aware, of course, that if you... I mean, yeah, fairy fire is fine, but in general, you can shift and then attack, yeah? Uh, yeah, I know that yeah. shift and attack. I'm just making sure that you're aware. First. No, that makes sense. Um, okay, Shira, um, that uh, this chicken is going to attempt to peck you. Um, attempt being the keyword, um, and then he's going to attempt to rake you. Nine to hit? Misses. I thought it might. Um, E2 is going to uh, move up towards uh, Glax. Um, Glax, that is a natural 20 to hit you. Um, for Ouch. eight uh, piercing damage as he pecks brutally um, into the side of your um, gut. Um, these these chickens stand approximately 14 inches tall. Um, he's then going to attempt to rake you. Uh, that is an 18 to rake uh, for 7 slashing damage. I'm down. Oof. Wait, wow. what? How can you be down? Short rest. I've done 15 damage. Did you not use your hit die when you shot rested? I did, and I had 16. Uh... You've made a miscalculation. I've only done 15 damage. Right. Sorry, I've only done 15 damage. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how you've gone down. Um, you should be on 1 HP. Yeah, cool. That's what I thought. Fennis, you're up. Alright, uh, I don't respect that I got woke up by a chicken. Um, uh -huh. I'm gonna try to stab- I'm gonna try to stab it. What are you stabbing with? Dagger attack, okay. 19. Yep, yeah, that'll hit. Uh, that's 10 damage. Uh, that's enough. Uh, E5 is down. What are the ones with uh, dis uh, with advantage when we attack against? It's E1, E3, and E6? Yeah. What's the top now, left I side? I will take the time to um, advance a little bit forward, if I can. Okay. I've got better sight on everything. Mm-hmm. Sew away my dagger, pull out my longbow, and that's my go. Okay, Glaxra. Um, okay, I will hold my book very tight. Uh, sorry, Josh, you seem to have gone very quiet. Give me a second, let me turn you up. Uh, say again, something about a book? I said, uh, fuck your mom. Yeah, did you? <laughs> and her book? Um, no, I'm, I'm changing my mind now, actually. Um, instead, I'm gonna flick through my book. Um... Uh, as I do, the pages flick for me, and then land on a spell. And as I start to mutter the incantation, my body like multiplies as I cast a mirror image on myself. Uh huh. Um, Ooh. and then I am gonna flick to the first page of the book and send out a beam of pink mist towards. Excuse me. Floor. Is mirror image a bonus action? Uh, it can be if you let it. <laughs> That's a no, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have any bonus action, do you? Apart from other spells. Okay, cool. Uh, Glax multiplies into multiple Glaxes. Um, and that will bring us to E6. E6 will jump down on top of um, the two of you. Uh, and he will slash out dagger at each side. Um... Oh, so they're in on this. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. sure. Make an insight check, uh, like us. As you wish. 
Well, in all fairness, you did get told by Shira that this was... That this word from outside was like an arcane command. What was the inside check like us? Oh. Fifteen. Yeah, um, they're not acting under their own decision making. Damn. They're being commanded. Oh. Um, so it was a 15 to hit Lycus. Uh, yep, just hits. Um, and a 24 to hit um, Kiaran. I'll hit. Yeah, figures it oh, would. Damn. Um, uh, Lycus, that's four piercing damage. Ow! Um, Kiaran, that's nine slashing damage. And that is max damage. Uh, Vernon, you're up. Uh, I'm awoken by that guttural, like, demonic sounding, uh, word command, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think the battle music would have woken you up. Uh. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, it, it definitely woke me, the player, up. Uh, yeah. But I'm gonna add, but, uh, I'm gonna use, like, a free action ask, uh, what, what is going on? Why are there chickens here? Dinner. Why are they attacking us then? Gotta earn what you eat. <laughs> no one wants to explain the situation to me. Earn what you eat. Fight the damn chickens. That's what you're being told. Um, bear in mind that enemy three, enemy one, and enemy six have purple fire around them. Yeah, Verdon would know what this means. Me, all you're Useful. gonna hear is. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, one watcher is uh, telling you that you've got to earn what you eat, and the other watcher is currently a hyena. Um, can I assume you're going you left? Mean? I speak uh, hyena. Go... <laughs> I'm, go to... I'm gonna go to E6 then, and uh... are you? Yeah, seems... yeah, I can fly. Um, only if you spend an action getting your wings out, love. No, you said that my wings are always out. Oh yeah, I did, didn't I? I was feeling nice. Yeah, Don't you know why. Did. I don't know why. Do you think um, okay. Um, so no opportunity to attack for me. Four. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, uh, advantage. Uh, Ooh, that's a twenty-three. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Uh, yeah. That's ten damage. Take that. Okay, um, okay. yep, yeah, just bear me a second. Uh, yep, yeah, he looks uh, slightly damaged. Um, Lycus, like you're up. Take that fiend. Oh, okay. Alright. Um, just like, there are windows in the back of this place, right? Uh, there were two windows boarded up at the back here. And then there's one yeah, door between really you and Kiaran. You can jump through it. Okay. Um. Huh. This is a pickle. Not the good kind. Um, not the dinner kind? No, nope, not the dinner kind. There may be weird dinner kind. <laughs> I hope so. What? Chickens aren't gonna eat I'm us. Gonna, I'm gonna turn to, to Glax. And I'm gonna say, Well, come on. Pick yourself back up. And uh, shoot a healing word across the room at them. Okay. Pew. And for your action? Seven. Um, even though Glax appreciates it, he's giving you a look that says, Why are you being so patronizing? My intestines are on the floor right now. <laughs> <laughs> My intestines. You're definitely. Uh, like us, action. That. Let's do. Uh... I'm gonna reach to my waist and uncork like a, a small like thimble just splash it in each face do a little acid splash action mm -hmm. ah so that is dex yep and she rolls a disadvantage uh 12 no it doesn't make it yay oh no country oh boy. He's immune oh, to acid damage. No, I'm joking. I he's not. do one damage. <laughs> he's not immune to acid damage. Uh, like us, so you turn over. Um, he wasn't allowed to take a feed. I know, I'm joking. Like us, is that uh, end your turn? Sure. Okay, uh, Shira? That's, are we dealing with? Um, who are we trying to deal with, guys? 
Well, you've I got no you've idea. got three chickens that would make a good lunch. Six chickens. Four. Right. Um. That doesn't help me in the least bit. Uh, I'm going to the middle one is what I'm targeting here. Okay. Are they like right next to each other? Uh, close enough. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna cast uh, Snillox Snowball Swarm on them. Okay, uh, radius on that? It is a 10 foot diameter, 5 foot radius. Uh, yeah, um, you'll be able to hit all three. Okay. That's uh, a deck a save, right? What's the DC, dex, please? Yeah, 14. Dex save. 14. Okay. Uh, chickens are dexterous. The five. Uh, okay, that one's not. Um, okay, they all failed. Um, this is cold damage, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so you'll notice as this snowball swarm hits them, their skin sort of ripples, and you see sort of a stone-like effect shimmer um, around them as it hits them. Uh, that is six, right? Yeah. Um. Is that E2? That is E2. Okay, and they are all wounded. That was 13. No, they, uh, the, their skin rippled into stone. Um, you can assume that means resistance. To cold I damage. I being a wizard already so much. Specifically to cold damage, okay? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, regardless, uh, Kiaren and... Um, uh, Lycus, make a deck save, please. a 20 dirty okay um just bear with me a second it um, happens to be a natural one Ew, bro. uh sorry if you get below an 18 uh you will take uh 14 bludgeoning damage um if you get above an 18 you will take seven um and you will be put 30 feet across the room uh, that just sent me 30 feet uh yep as the door gets pushed... Well, you've got nowhere to go, mate. Um, so, yeah, this dude is just going to waltz in. I'm going to give a nice big image. So, you're just going to get a nice look at Krull. This is Krull. He's ready for you. Um, and uh, the first thing he will do is pick up E6 by the feet and throw him backwards outside the door. Whoa. Fuck, you know. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, um, bear with me one second, please. Um, because I need to transfer something over here. Um, Guys, we don't gotta do this, alright? We can all just go on. Oh, no, 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 he's, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna try and kill me. He should me. be the most good dog, he'll up that alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's the point of his character, yeah, he'll be fine. I don't have any spells either. I have no healing whatsoever. I just have my channel divinity. Yeah, friendship. Okay. Um, however, uh, that will conclude his turn. And Kiaran, you're up. Uh, no, you're not. Sorry. Uh, E1 is up. Uh, E1 will run up to Verdon. Um, he will peck you with a 14 to hit. Uh, yes? No? No. Nope, okay. And he will claw you with a rake of his claws again for a 14 to hit. He will miss. Um, E4 will make a rake at Glax. That's a 14 to hit you, Glax. Wait, 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 wait. wait. we got to determine which one you're hitting first. Um, yep. Well, no, no, I, you tell me if a 14 would have hit you in the first place first. That is my armor. Right, okay, cool. Now you roll the D6, I think it is, or what is it? Uh... Yes, a d6. Oh, no, no, no. Gideon when you need him. Wait. Okay, no, it is a 20. And that will heal him, I do, because... Okay, cool. Um, and it will kill it. Um, yes. Cool, and then it so will take its second swing. Oh, that's a 23 to hit you. <laughs> So do you need 20 again? Uh, well, I don't know. You have to roll. It's a second hit. Yeah. 
Yeah, I need an A or higher. And yeah, that will be one of my clothes. Okay, oh, well done. Uh, Kiara, you're up. I'll make my way uh, downtown. Uh, you'll see me trot down to E3 uh, right next to it. Uh, yep, advantage. Actually, Did you make a con save, by the way, when you were knocked across the room? Yeah, let me throw that real quick. You know, seven um, bludgeoning damage. Yeah, that's yeah, a success. Carry on. Yeah, that'll be success. Um, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll swing at him. Sorry, it's going to be hard for me to roll with advantage right now because I don't have it on my sheet. Uh, either way, that's a 17 to hit. Roll for crit. That is a crit. Yep, yep. All you right, so chicken dead? for E3, we'll go ahead and roll uh, 46. Okay, I, you physically cannot not kill him. Um, he gone down. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, with a with a hideous laughter, you see me move towards E2, following okay. that and attempt um, to bite him as well. Just to be sure, does your uh, hyena have pack tactics? He does not, but I'm using rampage right now. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to attempt to fight at E2. That will be a 13 to hit. Mm-hmm. All right, that's 2d6. So uh, he'll attempt to bite at the neck of E2, hitting for seven damage. Yep, uh, he's dead. Plus three, that's nine, sorry. Yep. Um, since this is a bonus action, I'm assuming I can't use Rampage again. You can't Rampage so, multiple yeah. times in a turn. That'll be my turn. Fainus, you're up. Right. Uh, the the reason why it seems so long is because there was a second phase of combat when Big Bo Boss Man looked out. Got it, got it. So E2 is Yo. dead. Mm -hmm. So E2 is dead, yeah? Yeah. E4, E1, and Big Boss Two little chickens and this guy. And God. Right. Uh, no, he stands about six foot tall. Maybe eight foot tall. As much as the guy is a bit of a threat, has has a uh, is is the chicken E4 been hit at all? Oh yeah, yeah. E4 and E1 are severely wounded, um, and they're not really doing a whole lot. They're chickens. E1, wait, E1 wait. Lost the blow. Sorry, um, I think E1 died. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. Um, You're not doing a lot. One of them did 15 damage to me. Oh yeah, but you're weak. Yeah, sorry. Um, E1's dead. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that was ages ago. Um, Can E4 be dead as well? No, no, E4 can't be dead. He's severely wounded. Dude, if only I had a sleep. Uh, no. Kiaran, you're leaning in a way that we've got no face on the camera. Thanks. Yeah. He's calling it Kieran. <laughs> um, uh, cool. This, this might be a bad idea to leave the chicken alive. No, probably I not. I kind of I'll feel like I need to chicken. really hit the new boss man, so I'm going to um, bonus action Hunter's Mark mm -hmm. on oh, uh, the big boss man. This. Where did it go? And attempt to take an arrow shot. Sorry, big boss man's initiative has disappeared. There he is. Okay. Yes, he doesn't, he doesn't have get to go anymore. Yeah, he cool. doesn't get to go um, Sorry, how much? What was that? That's a 27 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, I'm going to mark him as my favourite enemy for one minute, until or until I lose mm -hmm. concentration. If, yep. if I were to concentrate on a spell, just do an extra 1d4 on this attack, and all uh -huh. attacks, subsequently. Yep. The favourite enemy is going to be 3 damage. Yep. Uh, Hunter's Mark is going to be 4 damage. Yep. And yeah. the bow hit itself is 10. So Woo! Ranger! Yep. Right. Rangers are rubbish! <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. I mean, they are okay. Yeah, they seem alright to me. Okay. They seem yeah. alright to uh, me. That's done. Does that conclude your turn? Yeah, great. I'm gonna, um, if I can, move a little bit further to the, to the right. Just, um, uh, I've been moving you, I, I moved you as far to the right as, as the building right, goes. That's, that's fine. That's, um, yeah. I just haven't condensed the battle map. Right, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. so I can't go any further right. No. Yeah, that'll do that. Uh, Glax. That's everything. You're up. Cool. Go flick through my book. Uh, and purple. Purple. Pink Mist is going to come around the chicken as I hex it. And I'll flick back to the front of my book and. Fire You're hexing the chicken? Yeah. Okay. 
That's a choice. And, uh, I can move the hex when I know. Eyes. And what's your issue, bitch? Carry on. Um, <laughs> and then I'm gonna fire out a pink mist at said chicken. That is a 14 to hit. Metal hit. That'll do. Uh, five force damage and two necrotic damage. Talk about overkill. Okay. Um, Verdon, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna look at. So, on a scale of one to ten, how like angry does this like full man look? Not very. He looks a bit hungry. Hey, listen, we don't gotta fight. All what right? language are you, you speaking? Because if it ain't abyssal, he ain't responding. <laughs> well, I don't have either of those. Nope. So. Either of Abyssal or Abyssal. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't have either Abyssal or Abyssal. <laughs> abyssal, of course. Mm. Uh... Wait, do you speak Abyssal, though? I don't speak Abyssal. Uh, you might speak Abyssal. <laughs> abyssal. <laughs> um, excuse me, Mr. Paladin. Would you like to move up into melee range? I really feel like I shouldn't, but yeah. I really feel like you should. I feel like we should have fight okay. this guy. Okay, can I him. point out that you are in a building and he is in the doorway? Damn him. Okay, the windows are only sort of a foot by one foot. You ain't getting out the windows. Uh, shut up. Right. Give him a chicken! Okay. Give him a chicken? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I chicken! To. No, keep the chickens. I'm hungry. Uh, I'd rather keep my life. Verdon, take a turn, please. I'll, I'll attack. Mm-hmm. It's a 13. Um... That hits. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, 14. Uh-huh. He likes that. That's nice. Is that your uh, turn? Unfortunately. A tragedy. Uh, Lycus, you're up. Wait, 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 no. I, I'm gonna bonus action harness divine power, and I regain a You cannot, if you don't have your divinity, you can't harness I, I divine do. power. I How do. do you have your divinity? Does it come back on a short rest? Uh, you channeled it earlier? Yes, that's uh, rebuke violence. It's, yeah. Uh, channel divinity. How many uses of your channel divinity do you get? One. On a short rest? Or a long rest? Uh, on a short rest, you get uh, one back. Channel divinity. It's on a long rest. You can use harness divine power once every short rest, but your actual divinity itself is on a long rest. No, it says uh, your it says channel divinity is one action, and you get it back on a short rest. Oh, okay. It uh, must be specific to your paladin class. Cool. Okay, harness divine power is great. Uh, like a drop. Okay. Does he seem uh, like? He's been hit once. Necromantic in any sense? Uh, give me an arcana check. I'd love to do that. That would make me very happy. Tell me this guy's a demon, please. A crisp 20. Yeah, um, he's an abyssal demon. Yeah, so I probably he, shouldn't try to suck his life. He also out. appears to be somewhat a uh, necrotic priesty. Ooh, yucky. Alright, okay. bring it on, bitch. Uh, I'm just gonna grab my thimble of acid and just ah, splash it at him. Okay. Wait, wait, can you? Are you throwing it across the room? Yeah, it's very, very accurate. <laughs> uh, trained for a long yeah. time. Um, yeah. deck save. You played yes. a lot of darts. Please fail. That's a nat twenty for twenty-two. <laughs> Fails. Okay, uh -huh. um, does that conclude your turn? No, I'm gonna wallow, and then I will be done. Shira, you're up. Okay. I'm gonna Scorching Ray this bitch. Okay. Scorching all, Ray! All three of them are being hit on him. We've got no one else to hit. Oh, he's gonna cook a chicken. 21. Mm-hmm. A 24. Yep. 
And a 22. Sick. Yeah, no way. I'm gonna beat his ass. You burn him to death. Seven. Hey, would you would you mind moving 12. me all the way to the left, actually? That is. Yeah, I got damage. it. I got it. I put them in separately because he's concentrating on something. Um. I will move you in a second. I'm just making my con saves. Who? No worries. Oof! He's not concentrating anymore. Um, like all the chickens aren't hypnotized oh. anymore. All chickens are all right. dead. <laughs> oh, but and, the spider uh, guy, he he he's a. And then I will. It's not what he was ceiling. concentrating on. I will tell you that for free. Okay. Um, and then he will take his turn. Um. Okay. Uh, first of all, he is going to summon a humongous trident. Um, this trident will be impossible to find for me. Uh, is he using a sacred weapon? He's using a spiritual weapon, yeah. Um, <laughs> what did you uh, Shira, that's coming at you on the ceiling. Oh, no. What did you shoot? Uh, that's a spiritual weapon. No, no, no. Who did you shoot with my stuff? I shot him. There's two people in this room to shoot, right? No, there's, there's one boss. Oh, I, th I thought there was two people in here. I thought nope. the guy on the ceiling was someone. Too. No, Spider-Man. He, oh. he threw him outside the room when he came in. Um, you can oh. assume... You can assume he's uh, ran off. Um, so that's a 14 to hit you, Shira. That's going to hit. Uh, that's 14 necrotic damage. Spiritual weapon can fly? Mm-hmm. Spiritual weapon is a floating weapon. I didn't know it had a flying speed. It could actually go up. Yeah, it can go up. What did you think it is? Just sat on the floor like... <laughs> like <so. laughs> My spiritual weapons have never been allowed to move off the fucking floor, so... Then that's ridiculous, yeah. Your spiritual weapon can move off the floor. Um, if you were a cleric, which you're not. Um, and yeah. and then he will I'll swing... Yeah, well, it's just ridiculous. It's a floating weapon. Why would it not be able to go upwards? Yeah. Um, uh, that's an 11 and a 22 to hit you. One of them hits okay. me. Okay, um, you take... Wait, how, much, how much damage did I take? Uh, you took 14. Holy shit. Um, and, uh, Darth, um, you will take 12 bludgeoning damage, uh, slashing damage, sorry. Um, and 6 necrotic. Um, I'm down. Hmm. I literally was one away. That's one what we away like to hit. Cool, Karen, you're up. Or did I? Fuck. Yeah, um, uh, with a chuckle, uh, Kieran will uh, make his way up to the large ox man, who mm -hmm. at this time, I guess, is around the same size that he would normally, uh, smaller than he would normally be. Um, so I guess the small ox man. And he'll attempt to bite at him. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll gnarl his teeth and he'll laugh a little bit as he bites into his, uh, into his thigh. Yep. We'll roll, uh... That'll be a 15 hit. Yep. But the divine smite right. won't get me up. And that will be... Yes, your hyena's gonna heal you. That'll be 12 <laughs> damage. That's a really good hit. He is very wounded. And, uh... You'll hear me cackle... At him. Uh... As blood off. starts pouring out of his thigh. Mm -hmm. And that'll be my turn. Fennis, you're up. Not the thighs. Alright, let's uh, <laughs> go for the shot again. <laughs> From the strength of my thighs. That's a uh, 16 hit. Mm -hmm. Wow, 6 damage on the bow. Yep. Literally the worst possible damage I could have gotten on that. An additional 6 on the hunter's mark. Oof, max. Yep. And oh, save the dice that giveth and they taketh. Ooh! He is severely, severely wounded. Does that conclude your turn? Nice. Yeah, 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 that's uh, gonna be. I yeah, that's gonna be my turn. Glax, you're up. Cool. Shoot him. I will bonus action move my pink mist over to the big boy. Once it swells then, around him. Yeah. What? And it begins to swirl around him. Carry on. Um, and then I will fire out a beam of pink mist. That is a twenty-one to hit. That will hit. 
and that is 10 force damage with one necrotic damage. Please describe his grisly demise. Hey. Oh, why do I have to be the one to do lethal damage? Um, okay. Um, Did you attack? So, <laughs> so, uh, so the, the pink mist that surrounds him, the, the hex mist, like it, it like wraps around his body as it goes upwards. And then as it wraps around his face, it just melts his skin away and his body just drops to the ground. Beautiful. Delightful. Okay. And uh, with that, the battle is concluded. Um, the little spider dude who got thrown out the door comes up to the doorway and he speaks again in Sylvan. And he says... And he says, I'm so sorry, that was my master. But his str his grasp of me has gone. Um, I will keep watch. Please, rest. Why, thank you. This has been an overwhelmingly positive exchange. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, he pulls, he pulls the board into the doorway again where it was, but he's the other side of it. He's outside. And he will watch out uh, for you. Does anyone speak Sylvan besides me? Uh, yes. Um, th I think everyone other than uh, Verdon speaks Sylvan. He doesn't matter right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's unconscious. No one cares. Does anybody have a way of picking him up? Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, well. I can, I can stabilize him. Yeah, great. Um, however, a long rest and a level up should do it. Um, quick level up. Nice. and with that episode, w with that, we will conclude our episode as he keeps watching. You may take a long rest Yay! for when you wake in the morning, standing outside is this spider-like beast. Um, he turns to you and some creatures came in the night, but my bestial appearance seems to have scared them off. I must return to my natural habitat, but... Please, uh, enjoy enjoy dinner. And he gestures towards the abyssal chickens. And that as it may be, I cannot survive out here for much longer. Um, and he... Um, he nods down towards the... Well, um, yes, they, I'll explain the frost thing in a second. Um, but uh, he nods down towards where the cleft in the city is that leads down to the lava. It is the lava he will be returning to. Um, oh. The abyssal chickens are sort of made of, like, lava rock. And that is why, yeah, no, no, but I'm letting you know, that's why they have resistance to cold damage. Like, they're made of lava rock. Um, which you'd think in some ways it might be more effective, but apparently, uh, yes, ice is resistant to fire. Who knew? Um, or fire is resistant to ice. But regardless, uh, that will bring us to the end of our episode. So, in timeless tradition, let's take Kruthik's face off the screen. Um, who arrived last on the scene... Um, Shira, uh, Moon, your MVP, please. Um, hmm. everyone's role playing. Mm. Everyone playing their character the way they should. Who had the opportunity to role play? Yeah. Of course, some people were uh, oh. not given turns. <laughs> okay, everyone, <laughs> fucking reaction to. Did you just say I already hate you? Already hate him. <laughs> That got me. That, that was for sure in character, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, next, last on the scene was Lycus. Just bear. Bear? So I like fun. it. The Good. It was, it was unbearable. It was. I got my ass not unconscious, just to clarify. <laughs> I'm waiting till he manages to use the word hyena as a pun. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of I'm which, um, oh sorry, no. Next up was Glax. I'm trying to go in reverse order from where we started in the storyline, yeah. um, but my brain's um, not that. My clever. MVP will probably be um, poor Salty constantly falling down, constantly being knocked <laughs> down, always Our on his knees, as we expect. <laughs> Unconscious twice, prone twice, right? <laughs> Good. Uh, Pretty good. Not just one sprung twice. We're starting as uh, we mean to go on. Uh, haven't you been knocked out twice? No, only once. Uh, I only got knocked out once. I got knocked down. Oh, you got knocked down the second time. Oh, well. What a tragedy. Uh, speaking of which, um, Oscar, your MVP. My MVP would have to go to my fellow Night Watcher who looked at me and said, Seems good. 
<laughs> yep. I can roll with that. Um, that was definitely uh, very good for me. Um, Verden Winterbrook. Darf, your MVP. Uh, my MVP was Josh being... It was Josh's uh, not wanting to describe the de <laughs> death after going out of his way to make sure that he would indeed kill the enemy who was about to die. Yep. He knew he was about to die. Well, he literally said he's like his his life force is like almost gone. This too seriously. Like one attack. Yep. Oh, I've been um. <laughs> well. Um. And Jamal. I'm going to have to go with a double here. Mm -hmm. First is the first combat being basically unable to do anything until right at the very end. Yep. Because sleep. And the second is immediately giving us a sort of boss fight type battle, mm -hmm. which felt really fucking dangerous. But actually, it turns out we could handle it pretty damn well. Yeah, I mean, all of these fights were dangerous. Like more of a threat than it actually was, and that was a good thing. All of these fights were majorly dangerous. You say that, but you've been left with somebody unconscious that you can't pick up off the ground. Um, yeah. Um, so you are you, from the long rest and leveling up. You he will be able to be got off the ground, but it, it was pretty bad. You know, if the fight had gone around another round, people were getting knocked down, and the healers had nothing left. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, for me, it is. It was uh, having the opportunity to uh, throw these sorts of creatures at players. Um, these are all the sorts of enemies that you never get to fight because you don't go into the abyss. You don't go into the plane of Tartarus. You don't go into the plane of fire. Um, these beasts normally get left on the, just in the monster manual to do nothing. Um, getting to throw these exotic beasts at my players and having really fun and unusual abilities. Um, enemies that have, you know, 106 HP and 12 armor class or 18 armor class and 10 HP. Um... It's, it's really enjoyable to uh, see how you guys are navigating around that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to you exploring the city. Um, that's going to be next episode. You know, There will be more roleplay next episode, obviously. But I wanted to set things off with a tone. Um, and that tone is this world is fucking dangerous. Enjoy. And with that, I think we shall come to the end of our episode. Um, thank you very much to Jeff Trout for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome to the Duck Pond. Stay the fuck away from my pond life. And I think um, we will simply end there. Is anybody worth reading? Yes, uh, we're going to raid Blue Box RPGs. Um, they are today... Um... Sorry, I can't type and talk apparently. That's quite difficult. Um, they are today on episode 14. I think uh, of Cord in the Web, um, which is a Greyhawk Awakening um, storyline. Um, super fun, guys. Uh, give them some love, and we shall see you all soon. If you guys would like to say goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. We shall see you soon. Hello. <laughs>